Hey guys. Hello. Uh, so you guys recognize the solar powered lantern from the deconstruction that we did two weeks ago, I want to say. And uh, well, I decided I wanted to reverse engineer the um, PCB that runs this whole magical show. Uh, so here we've got the PCB and the first thing I did was I looked to see what was um, po where, where our positive poles were, where our negative poles were, um, and then I pretty much looked to see what sorts of components were on the board, and then from there I made a super ghetto awesome version of a schematic. And uh, I think we have here, the we have BB for big blue, which is an inductor coil that's actually on the other side of the board here. And then there are two diodes on that front, on that side, as well as the LED. Um, so on the back here, we have a number of resistors here, here, and here, here, and then a capacitor. Um, and I kind of, this is an aftermath of the destruction that I inflicted upon this poor board when I tried to desolder uh, the SOT23 um, unknown components Q, which are assumed to be transistors. Uh, so kind of like how C stands for capacitor, R for resistor, Q apparently stands for transistor. So I have taken two transistors off, off of here and one here. And actually, if you see, I messed it so hard that uh, the innards of the transistor is still on the board. So nice. I'm clearly not going to be analyzing that anytime soon. Okay, so um, again, here's the first version that I made uh, with BB being big blue, the inductor, um, or so we think, the middle tapped inductor. Q1, Q2, Q3, the unknown transistors. Um, and then I think I incorporated the solar panel into this. Because it's kind of strange, it seems like there's like one power plane and then two different ground planes. Um, and then three... Oh, so this was when we started trying to figure out whether or not uh, the transistors were NPNs or PNPs. Um, and... Well, we thought then that uh, Q1, Q2 were NPNs and Q3 was a PNP. And so we went with that for a little while, um, and a little while, and then we went back to them being unknown cues because uh, it didn't seem something didn't seem right. So um, what I did then after that was I focused on the different power points and the ground points, and then I more specifically drew where the things were. I also wrote out the um, what's it called? The resistance values and such. Um, so one thing I did want to show you guys was using the diode function on the capat on the multimeter, and it's really kind of newbie. So I apologize. Uh, you, the rest of you smart people can turn this off now. But um, so I wanted to figure out how I could measure the transistor um, leads using the diode function because as you know transistors are PNPs or NPNs so like that's like two PN junctions smushed together right so PN NP is a PNP or NP P yes NP PN is an MPN um, so there's a couple ways you can do this you can measure it via using uh, resistance right um, so in one direction you should have resistance and the other direction you should not have resistance. Um, so here is a, just a larger version of what this diode looks like. Um, and I'm going to put the red probe on the anode and the black probe on the cathode. And you can see there is some resistance, like around 920 ohms, but that's it. Okay, and then if I flip this around, resistance-wise, there is complete resistance, so nothing goes backwards, right? 
conventional flow theory style. Okay. Now if I do the diode, again here's my red probe on the anode, my black probe on the cathode. You'll see you get this cool value, I don't really know what it means, but you get a value. And then if I switch it again, then you see there's a 1 and nothing happens. So essentially you know that if your red is on a particular lead and your black is on another lead and you get results, then you can draw your diode that direction. So what I did was um, f for all of the transistors, the unknown transistors that were here, I got that information and um, kind of did lead to lead and so on and so forth. Eddie's Guide to Reverse Engineering. Right. And so, I end up with this. So we're Q1, from pin 2 to pin 1, pin 2 to pin 3, we had like current flow, I guess, or charge flow. Pin 2 to pin 1, 3 to 1. Um, on Q2 we had charge. And then, same with this. Um, although these are kind of strange because they have flow in like three different directions and uh, I think some of the folks said that because the the um, parts were on the PCB that that could cause some ambiguity in terms of how it's how it shows whether or not it's a MPN or PNP. So I just made these easier on me. Um, as you know the current goes from P to N, right? And so I just kind of made that comparison according to the arrows here. So let's take Q2, which is the easiest, right? This is a PN and a PN. So what you're going to end up is a P and P transistor with one at the, as the base, right? Now the problem with these two other ones is that this one could be a PNP with one as the base, but it could also be an NPN with two as the base. Um, and then this one is NPN with one as the base and then PNP with two as the base. Does that make sense? Kinda? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, so I desoldered, well I attempted to desolder these unknown cues so I could better analyze them away from the rest of the PCB components and I destroyed two of them. Yeah, we don't really have the stuff for desoldering SMT parts here. I know, so I'm, I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a sad panda. <laughs> I mean, this one turned out okay. This one's all right, and this is a duplicate of this one, so that one's okay if that one's messed up. But this is, this is Q3, and it's so sad. <laughs> so anyway, they've been uh, working on reverse engineering the stuff in the chat room all week. Yep. If you want to join in, feel free. Yep. We're on Afternet. The channel is TYMKRS. Yes. IRC. Yes. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Till then. Bye. Bye. We post videos all the time, so don't forget to subscribe. And follow us on Twitter at TYMKRS.